Good morning, good morning. Oh, I need to, as you can tell, there's a lot of condensation going on this morning. So I need to get everything focused on the windscreen, which basically means turn everything to the right. I'm not going to put the fan on too high. Yeah, it's a very sort of wet autumnal morning. That wood pile's gone down, we've done. I've got too much wood. Oh. But it's a nice position to be in. Let me just... Ha ha ha, see? Car going past. Let me just... See? Peep and creep, I can't see a bloody thing. To the left, because the sun's right down the road. Can you see the shadow of the car? on the road in front, that means the sun's directly behind me. Oh dear. Oh, there we are, thank goodness. Who's that way to be picked up? Get a lot of seasonal workers. They call, uh, Americans call it stoop labor because they stoop over to work. So, how are you? I trust you're well. Look at me all wrapped up. It's not too bad. It is quite, like, as you can see, well, you'll be able to see in a minute, there's not much of a, uh, no clouds in the sky, so. Temperatures dropped overnight. The, uh, all the news at the moment is the economy has grown by 0.2% and uh, the new Labour government which is it's less than 100 days in and uh, it's got a budget coming up is uh, sort of we're in, we're in limbo at the moment I said to a guy the other day it's like 1939 we're all sitting around the wireless list waiting to hear what Mr Churchill has got to say about oh no it was Mr Chamberlain about the uh, the uh, position we're vis-a-vis -vis <laughs> the Second World War. So, <clears throat> oh no, well, it probably was Churchill, wasn't it? Because I think by the Chamberlain was the one who came back with the piece of paper the, uh, that wasn't worth anything, and then Chamberlain, and then the, he uh, he left. <laughs> anyway, look, what am I going to talk to you about? sort of general economics today all about uh, the upcoming budget now we've got a budget coming up on November uh, October 30th and uh, coincidentally we've got the uh, American presidential election on November the 5th and um, so there's quite a lot of uh, what's the word portentous events coming up So what that means is that things could change and there, there could be a, a shift in the force. The 0.2% growth in a month is like, uh, I mean it's better than a 0.1%, let's put it that way, but not much, do you know what I mean? It's like, they want growth in the economy. Don't, let's not forget our basics, all right? Government gets itself into debt, and the only way it can get rid of that debt is to write it off, is to, uh, or to, um, what they do is they say that they're gonna outgrow it. In other words, the economy is gonna grow so much. now. In this country, we've got a, a, a shoddy record of growth. So, saying that in this country we're going to outgrow our debt is really quite funny. So, what they do is they do the third reason, which is they just inflate it away by printing so much money that money loses its purchasing power. So, <clears throat> so I don't know to what extent they think that growth is the solution. I think that uh, 
some some people in government probably think that growth is the solution, but some of the ones who are not very good at maths, the ones who are good at maths will realise that there's no way we're going to outgrow the debt. So we've got to inflate it away because we can't default on it. So they've done a pretty good job of uh, using COVID as an excuse to print money and spend it like drunken sailors. And uh, as a result, they've inflated quite a bit of the Dowie. But the trouble is that they've inflated most of the wealth of the middle class away as well. <laughs> the poor haven't got any money, so they're relying on benefits. The rich actually do suffer quite a lot. Uh, because a lot of what they own is uh, denominated in uh, pounds. Oh, hello. That's it. Couldn't see a thing there for a minute. But I'm going to come on to that in a minute. So, of course, everybody's going on about what's going to be in the budget. Oh, dear. This is really bad. Oh, we're going to turn right in a minute. It's going to do it again, isn't it? There we go. Good. I think I might have to. I'm just going to suspend this while I put the blows on maximum because this is not any good at all. Anyway, hopefully you can still hear me. So there's a lot of speculation about what's going to go into the budget. And one of the things that is the thing that's going to go into the budget is apparently an increase in capital gains tax. Now, you know, you may not. Uh, believe in uh, taxing everything I certainly don't uh, the government is uh, you know as they say they keep people chained to the government with gold handouts and uh, that's why you, you vote for the government that's going to give you the most well okay okay I think we're nearly there now. I'll turn it off again in a second. So the government basically, uh, you know, if you believe in the government's ability to raise tax, then it's raising it pretty much from everywhere, right? I mean, it raises it from... Uh, when you move house, it raises it when you, you know, buy, buy a cup of tea. You know, every, I had to have my boiler serviced the other day and the Chancellor was, was as soon as the boiler was serviced, there was a the Chancellor, the total bill was £100 and the Chancellor's holding his hand out for another 20 quid. So, uh, you know, the Chancellor is a bane of my life, to be quite honest. So they check, they tax uh, sugar, they tax everything. Everything is taxed, and we've got pretty much the highest tax rate since 1948 in this country now. And bearing in mind that of 1948, we were rebuilding the country after the Second World War. So, and we're certainly not rebuilding the country after the Second World War now. So, the, the why we've got such high tax rates? really just relates to government spending, how much the government spent. And as uh, Peter Schiff, the, the uh, economic commentator in the United States says, uh, you can't cut taxes without cutting the size of government. Now, capital gains tax is a tax on anything that's gone up in price when you sell it. 
And now here's the problem. The problem is that things get, they, they don't go up in price because they've necessarily gone up in value. They almost certainly go up in price because the purchasing power of the pound has dropped. Now, so, so say you take, for example, I don't know, suppose you own, you own an asset, I don't know, suppose it's a, I don't know, a painting or anything, anything, a painting, and you buy it for a hundred thousand pounds, and then while you're, it's hanging on your wall, the government doubles the money supply. They print, print an amount of money equivalent to the amount of money that's already in circulation. And as a result, there's more money chasing the same amount of goods and services. So the price of stuff starts to go up. And eventually this painting of yours, you have it revalued, and it's revalued at 200,000 pounds. Now, has it gone up in value? No. It's still the same painting by the same painter. Nobody's improved it or anything. It's been hanging on your wall. But all of a sudden, you owe, you owe a part of its value to the inland revenue. And that part is equivalent to the amount that they've overprinted the money. So, you heard the saying, or you might have heard the saying, but you're hearing it now, inflation is theft. And that's true. As the government prints money, it, um, it inflates the money supply, dilutes the money supply, and dilutes your purchasing power. So you're literally having uh, your purchasing power is being stolen from you. So I'll give you a, I'll give you a concrete example, right? In 1961, um, a woman called Vivian Nicholson, I think, won the pools. Well, actually she didn't, her husband won the pools. Um, and uh, when asked what she was gonna do with the money, she said very famously, I'm going to spend, 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 right? Now, that's not the point, because she, she ended up broken. And, uh, and basically, the lesson to be learned from that is, nobody ever has so much money that you can't spend it all. Although I suppose these days, well, that's not quite so true. But she she won, or her husband won, 143,000 pounds. And uh, in in context today, you're like 143 pounds. Wouldn't even buy a small house. I don't know how she's going to spend, spend. Won't take her long to spend that long. But what you have to understand that is translated into today's money, that 143,000 pounds was over four million over 4.2 4.3 million something like that now the reason why this is interesting to me is because i was born within a couple of years of when she won the money so you could more or less say she won the money when i was born and the change in purchasing power such that to, to buy for 143,000 pounds then, you would need 4.2, 4.3 million pounds now. It reflects the, uh, the tax, the inflation tax, that I've had to pay throughout my lifetime. Yeah. It sort of very, very neatly sums it all up over a long period of time, to too long unfortunately but you know it's quite shocking isn't it to think uh, that uh, that you need 4.3 million now to buy what 143,000 pounds used to so that's that's an example of in the inflation tax and the government all governments now try and keep it down to 2% inflation because people in general they're not that bothered about two percent inflation whereas in fact two percent inflation compounded over over a lifetime is is a lot of money you know it's um i mean two percent over 10 years is more than 20 percent of the purchasing power of your pounds gone now coming back to our example of the uh painting what Charging capital gains tax on uh, paintings means where, where there's been no gain. There's literally been no gain. 
is that you're paying uh, part of the value of that object over to the government in the same way as when they uh, charge you uh, income tax or, or put inflation up, you know, you're paying more in gross, more for your groceries. All that money is, um, or a, a better example is wages, you know, when you, you, you earn the same wage for five years and then all of a sudden your boss tells you you've gone into a higher uh, a wage bracket because the allowances haven't gone up, your wages have gone up a bit and your the allowances haven't gone up so you're now a higher rate taxpayer. All this is very insidious and very sneaky, very secret ways of uh, depriving you of your wealth. Your wealth defined as the purchasing power of your pounds. Now the reason why uh, I was saying that inflation affects the poor, or it doesn't affect the poor because they've got uh, just the benefits, and, and it doesn't affect the rich because the rich don't really for the most part have their assets in cash if they've got independent financial advisors and they are investing in the S&P 500 and stuff like that then they will pay capital gains on their stocks and shares but if they're smart they'll invest in large country estates uh, where they live and which are exempt and the rich are very clever at buying stuff which is exempt from capital gains tax examples being Gold sovereigns, not Krugerrands, because they they have to pay tax on Krugerrands, but gold sovereigns on uh, land which is uh, farmland, for example, um, clocks, watches, anything that's uh, exempt. So the rich, you know, they tend not to suffer too much, although I still think if they've got to the extent they've got any assets denominated in, in pounds, then obviously they will lose the purchasing power of those assets when they come to be sold. So, now there's a very uh, famous uh, economist called Milton Friedman and he is pretty much like, I wouldn't say he was the Einstein of econ economists, but he was certainly, um, economists never learn, they never build on the work of others. They rely on the work of others, uh, but they never, uh, not never to the extent of uh, standing on the shoulders of giants, if you see what I mean. There are some, uh, there are some like uh, Hayek and uh, Mises, the big, the Austrian school and stuff like that, and they've been demonstrated to be correct. But then you get one bloke comes along who sort of more or less spouts what the government wants to hear, and so he gets elevated and he's the one who goes to the IMF and everything because he says what the government wants to wants to be told to do. And that was a true in, in dentistry, uh, for example. There was a guy who the government felt that there was a lot of um, unnecessary scanning and polishing done at the same time as the checkup. So they brought in this uh, periodontist to. Uh, what's his name? Keezer. I'm not at all sure. I'm not going to libel it. Well, he's dead anyway. So he's, I think his name was Bernard Keezer. K E I S E R. And I used to remember him as Bernard Keyser, the periodontal geezer. And if I'm correct, he he, he uh, came in and gave the government the advice that uh, dentists uh, shouldn't be doing scanning and polishing. Because, um, and the most controversial thing he came up with was he said that He said that uh, you shouldn't go to the dentist because studies have shown that patients who go and see the dentist regularly end up with more dentistry than those who don't. 
Um, which is almost just the most stupid thing to say. You know, it's like it's like people who uh, go and go to uh, garages get more punctures repaired than those who don't. And on the face of it, it sort of sounds a bit sensible, but then if you think about it, it was really it was just designed to try and cut down on the amount of um, NHS dentistry that was done at when at a time when it was fee for item and very sensitive to uh, demand. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, <clears throat> so so capital gains tax is an unfair tax. And, and you might say, well, yeah, I, I agree, it's all unfair. Inflation, by the way, is um, 6%. If you um, want to think long term about inflation then and then basically what you have to do is you have to look at the increase in the money supply over a long period of time and over any long reasonably long period of time you'll find it's about six percent so if you want to judge the performance of your assets ask your independent financial advisor whether he's managed to pass this hurdle rate of six percent growth because if he hasn't got 6% growth for you on your assets after management charges, then, then in fact you're losing money. So, capital gains tax really, because you're, you're paying a tax on how much the government has debased the money. So, you're, you've got this painting you bought it for a hundred. It's now selling for two hundred, which is what you need to get your value back. And then along comes the government and said, "Well, we're going to raise uh, charge a capital gains tax on that because you've had a, a gain, whereas in fact you haven't had a gain. All you've had is a price increase. It's not been a gain at all. All you're doing is breaking even." <clears throat> And along comes government and says, well, we're going to pretend that you're not breaking even. We're going to pretend that you've made some money there and we're going to tax you on it. Now, there is a simple way around this. And hopefully you'll have already spotted what it is. And that is to index capital gains tax by inflation. In other words, to separate out the element of the price increase, which has been caused by a simple debasement of the currency, and leave only the real gain. And then, you know, I probably wouldn't have too much trouble with government taxing that as a, as a gain. I mean, I would, because I don't think they, you know, I think the government should only be very very severely restricted in its operations no so it's like that life liberty and the pursuit of happiness isn't it the government should guarantee you your life they should guarantee you your liberty you know not be locked up and they should guarantee you the pursuit of happiness they don't guarantee you happiness they just guarantee you are able to pursue happiness whether you find it or not is is neither here nor there but people think that the government should do far more than that. They think that the government should give them life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, health care, uh, housing, <laughs> education, minimum basic income, you name it. So the government is, is taxes, has to tax everything in this because of this expectation that we should be like a socialist society. And in fact, capital gains tax was indexed. It was indexed. So it's all very well you're saying to me, angry, what you're saying is completely stupid and out of mainstream thinking. It's not at all out of mainstream thinking. Until April 2008, capital gains tax was index linked. They had a thing called taper relief, which meant that you could claim that your... Um, capital gain was only due to the fact 
that the money had been debased and you could adjust it accordingly. But Alistair Darling was the Chancellor who abolished uh, index linking and, and taper relief in, in uh, the budget that took effect from April 2008. And, and as a result, led to people paying um, capital gains tax on, on basically what wasn't a gain. It's not a gain. That's why it's a misnomer. It shouldn't be called capital gains tax. And that's how the government um, that's how the government not only uh, takes away your purchasing power of your money through debasement but also takes away the your your uh, value of your assets even when even when you're not earning any more money you end up paying more tax and if you haven't made any capital gains you still end up paying more tax and the whole system is uh, very unfair anyway we'll wait and see what happens all right i'm gonna work now i'll uh, mr t26 pmm is in my spot again i'm sure he does it deliberately i'll um, see you later bye